I have one question for white people out here in America. What do you want? Um, when it comes to black people, it, that's the question I have to ask. What do you want? Um, when black people try to build businesses, um, they get burnt down by white people back in the day. When black people tried to leave the South during the Great Migration, there were white people right there to take them off the train. Um, there's always been this whole thing about separate and equal, but whenever black people try to make things equal, there is white people right there trying to keep black people, um, t telling them to accept substandard. I mean, seriously, what do you want? I mean, what do you want from black people? I mean, all black people really do want to do is just live and be able to build their own communities, build their own infrastructure, and build things for themselves. They, they, you say that you don't want us in your society, but whenever we try to move away and build our own thing, there you are trying to undermine it and destroy it. This makes no sense to me. What do you want? Again, what do you want? I mean, whenever black people try to do something for themselves and they try to do it away from you, you say you don't want black people around you, but then here you are, every, turn, every chance a black person gets. Every time a black person tries to build a business, again, like I said before, every time a black person tries to build a business, there you are right there trying to make sure that they, our business is dictated to by your terms. Um, every time we try to build a school and educate our children, you're trying to make sure that we are educating your ch our children by your terms. Every time we try to build and maintain our families, you're there trying to make sure it's dictated to by your terms. But how can you ask us to do things on your terms when you say you don't want us around you and you don't want us to do, you don't, you don't, you don't need us, you don't like us, you don't want us, you don't need us, but you want us to do things on your terms. Uh, that doesn't, that's not how a functional interdependent relationship works. And you don't go to other people's communities like the Greeks, the Arabs, the Jews, the Chinese. You don't tell them that they have to do things on your terms. You only go to the black community and tell them that they have to do things on your terms. And then you would tell us that we have to accept substandard. All the other groups that I just mentioned, they can come here and they can get everything to be the best that they can be. They're told that, you know, we'll accept whatever you give, whatever you take from them, but when we come here and we can prove that we can make things and do things on our own, you try to undermine us, you try to destroy us, you try to destroy our communities, and you destroy our towns like Rosewood um, and Black Wall Street. When we had our own economic infrastructure, our own economic business structure, um, and again, it goes back to the question I'm asking, what do you want from black people? Because all black people want to do is just live and achieve this American dream that you supposedly promised everybody in ever since the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. That Amer that black people keep forget their finally get their piece of the American apple pie. But every time we try to even get our slice of the apple pie, there there you are right there. Um, and in most cases, you're trying to keep us from getting to the table to get our slice of that pie. I mean, seriously, what do you want? Um, because you can't say that you want, um, you hate black people and you don't want black people to have anything. And then when black people, uh, any of your stuff, but when we go to get our own stuff, there you are right there in the way. Um, again, that's, it's like with these government programs, you say, um, I'm trying to help you, but then then you're complaining, oh, I'm taking, you're taking all our tax dollars for welfare. But if you deny this black man the ability to get a job at your businesses because you won't let him have his own businesses, you deny him the opportunity to have a loan at a bank to start his own business, um, what is it that you exactly want? Because this is confusing to me. Um, what do you want? Do you want black people to be in some sort of permanent underclass so, so it states your ego? 
do you want to be able to have a group of serfs bound to your ghettos so that you can have somebody to point at and say that this person is permanently at the bottom and you don't want them you don't have to be like him is it exactly what you what you want um is a group of people that you can just say that you're better than because this 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 is this whole thing is it makes no sense to me i mean every chance every turn in history that we look at at things when black people are trying to do for self and do things on their own there's a white person right there standing in the way I mean and that's why I asked the question what do you want because I know what black people want but we want to know what you want because this is getting really tired um, white folks um, just that just coming here all the time getting in the way and it's like you just don't want to make up your mind it's like you, you don't know what you want you free black people but then when black people start exercising freedom there you are putting strings and terms and conditions on the freedom and that clearly shows me how codependent you are and how dysfunctional you are because when a person is let go, you just you don't want anything to do with them. It's like in a relationship when you break up with a girl. Um, and you you don't want to see her anymore. You don't want anything to do with her anymore. You, there is no just friends or anything like that. You're not having any more contact with her. Um, you're pretty much done. But you keep coming back, putting strings on, putting terms on, putting conditions on, um, coming back with apology government programs, apology. I mean, this is after you... Um, lynch somebody, burn somebody, or one of the cops kills a black man or something like that. Come back with an apology program, apology um, government program, um, apology social program, apology jobs, apology job training, and then the process starts all over again. But I feel that black people have to start saying this to um, white supremacy and the people who practice white supremacy. What is it that you exactly want? from black people because all the time here you are right there whenever black people are trying to move on whenever black people are trying to move on on their own here you are still trying to maintain this codependent relationship where you keep trying to attach these strings terms and conditions and ever-changing standards on black people and I have to say when are black people going to sit there and and ask this, demand, ask this question the way I'm asking it, of what do you want? Because this is getting old. This is getting tired. Everywhere you go, you're in the way. You're making it, you're interfering. And it's, it's clear that black people didn't need you back in the 1860s and 1870s during the Reconstruction. And black people were building their own towns. They were building their own infrastructure. And if left on their own, they were going to build their own communities, and I dare to say they're even their own states. And here you are, and every and in every chance you get, you undermine them, but you won't undermine the people, the immigrants who come overseas. I mean, is it rooted in your own insecure fear that black people would come and enslave you? I truly doubt that would happen. I, what I think what would have happened is black people would have been like, um, in the 1700s with Benjamin Banneker, you know, he was a free black. He wasn't thinking about under overthrowing the country and enslaving people. I think that's what would have happened if black people were left alone. They would have integrated in society just like um, every other immigrant group, but the only person who keeps undermining us is white folks who keep thinking that they have to control things and dictate the terms of black life and the black community and how the black community is built and established. I believe if black people were left alone to build their own community, they would build a very strong and vibrant community, but it's the constant interference of white people who don't know what they want from black people and insist on ever-changing terms and ever-changing contracts, just like um, nice guy syndrome or codependence people do. This is what codependent people do. like. Um, alcoholics and, and and husbands who batter their wives they come at you with these ever-changing terms they 
They keep trying to get you to play this cat and mouse victim game. And this is why I asked the question, what do you want? Because healthy, functional people are going to look at you and go, you know, you just keep coming back at me with the same things. Every time I'm trying to do something, here you are. Just like the batterer is when the, when the wife leaves and doesn't come back. Here's this guy trying to come back again and again and again with his apology stuff, with his roses and bouquet of roses and his promises of change and his constant apologies and his gifts. And then after you take his gifts, which is what black people do, a lot of black people do with the government programs, government handouts, job training programs, and the, and the little jobs that some people get out of the job training programs, he goes back to, to abusing you. And eventually you have to look at this codependent relationship and just say, you know, this has just got to end. And what I think is really is scared of, what a lot of white people are scared of, is that black people are going to be able to prove they can go on their own. And that your whole concept and ideology of white supremacy and black inf of white supremacy is going to be proven wrong. And I think that's the main reason why you keep harassing and haranguing black people and keep trying to change the terms and changing the standards for black people. I think that's really what this is all about. Because you're afraid that if black people start creating things on their own terms, they will prove that they are actually truly the equal, or I dare even to say the superior to the so-called supreme white man who believes that he is a god in his own mind and in his own right. And that people will start saying to themselves that, you know, God is not white. They will start rejecting the idea of this white, supreme white man and this white Jesus and this whole whitewashed world and start defining things on their terms and start seeing the world in a whole different perception. And this is why, I, again, I'm going to ask the question, what do white people want from black people? Because it's clear to me that you know, you just don't know what you want. I mean, you just keep coming at black people trying to maintain this codependent relationship. And the codependent relationship between whites and blacks is truly sinking this country and making it less and less competitive with each passing generation. Um, I, that's the way I, because I'm really looking at the country and I'm looking at the direction it's going in. And it's this relationship because codependent relationships are a road downhill and this codependent relationship that has evolved out of racism and out of white supremacy between whites and blacks is killing both both races long term because I'm looking at how we compete with other countries and we're not competitive at all we're not strong like we used to be um, and that's all due to this codependency because our best and brightest are so caught up in this racism and this race race issues that they're not focused on making the country the best it can be and, our, and all we're doing is putting mediocre people in positions of power and when you have a mediocre person in a position of power just because of his skin color it prevents us from actualizing our potential as a nation other nations are, don't have that problem because they are, their races are all mono, they, they're all monolithic and because everybody's the same race, they're able to put the best and brightest in the jobs and they're, bit, they're able to compete with each other. This is preventing us from competing on a global level. And this is sad. The uh, sad irony is that we created this global economy, but we're not able to compete in it effectively because we're so caught up in co skin color. And I'm looking at the bigger picture in 20 to 30 years. I don't see the U.S being competitive against Russians, the Chinese, the Indians, or the Arab Arab states. Because we're so caught up in black people hating white people and not being able to meet our own goals. I'm, I'm looking at how every other community is united and is making inroads in progress, but this whole racial codependency is holding us back and it's driving the country deeper and deeper into an abyss. I mean, I look at our test scores, our dropout rates, all of them low, and I can pretty much look at it and say, look, a lot of this has to do with 
this need for white people to be supreme, and it's not going to happen. I mean, the world is changing, and America is not changing with it, and it's not going to be competitive if it doesn't get itself right, because right now, we're just messed up because white people don't want to don't want to say what they want when it comes to black people and black people a lot of them are so codependent they don't even know what they want anymore they're so confused I mean I'm looking at the last two generations especially the one that came after the crack epidemic a lot of them are just so confused and have no idea what they want for themselves they have no idea on how to build a black community they have no idea on how to build an infrastructure they don't have an idea on how to build businesses and because they've grown up their entire lives dependent on white-owned businesses and non-black businesses for their sustenance, they don't know how to do for self. And that's a scary thing, because if you don't know how to do for self, if you don't know how to um, create your own thing, you're going to be up a creek, because you're going to have to depend on those people. Like right now, a lot of black communities depend on foreign grocery stores for their groceries, white supermarkets for their groceries, um, Asian-owned laundromats for their laundry needs, um, Hispanic groceries for their, you know, snacks and stuff, um, Hispanics for their barbering, because right here in New York, Dominicans now control the haircutting and barbering of black hair, and that's a bad place for black people to be, that's why, again, I ask white people, what do you want? Do you want a group of interdependent people who will be able to do for themselves, or do you want a bunch of codependent serfs bound to your ghettos who will have nothing of, who will own nothing of value, have do nothing of value, and be part of some sort of pseudo-feudal system where they give you their very best, and then you throw some crumbs back at them to live off of? Is that what you want? Is that the type of relationship you want with black people? Because that's, that's not a functional relationship, and eventually that type of system is going to collapse just the same way the um, plantation system collapsed because what happened was the world changed around those plantation owners and their, their whole infrastructure was eating them up in cost and even if they had gotten away with um, keeping slavery after the Civil War or didn't even the Civil War didn't even start they would have gone broke because the Industrial Revolution was coming, people were doing a new form of business, and they wouldn't have been able to economically survive. They were going to be obsolete uh, anyway. Because if you look at history, they were on their way out, but they just refused to admit, because this is another American trait. Americans refuse to admit when they're wrong, and they refuse to admit that something isn't working anymore. And that's what everybody else in the world will say, look, this doesn't work anymore, we need to do something different. Your average American will sit there and say, this isn't working, let's do more of the same. And we have to look at it as this whole black people being codependent on government programs, government assistance, and foreign, you know, entities is not beneficial to black people long term. And black leaders who promote this type of codependency are not helping black people. What they're doing is they're holding black people back. And this cannot be, and if any white person wants this system to continue in this way just so they can say they can dictate the terms of how black people live and so that they can have some semblance of supremacy, they're backwards and they're killing their own, they're destroying their own country at their, at their own expense. And it's just insane to think that you're going to do this um, and still maintain the so-called pseudo-supremacy over black people when those same black people could actually help build your country up and make it strong and build, help you build a stronger infrastructure overall. Because I look at America's infrastructure, our electrical system is 50 years old, um, our plumbing systems are hundreds of years old, and we're not focusing on building, rebuilding that infrastructure. I mean, on a federal last, I mean, the last president to actually focus on our infrastructure was Dwight Eisenhower. And his highway system, as 50 or 60 years old that it is, helped this country move in the right direction. We need 
more infrastructure plans. We don't need more government handouts. What we need to do is build and help rebuild our infrastructure because it's obsolete. You can't run um, today's computers and today's electrical system on, on a 50-year-old electrical system. Our highway system just needs to be overhauled altogether because we've got more cars and more people and more more people coming back and forth to work. We need more. We need a new sewer system and all that stuff. And this is all the stuff that we're not focusing on because everybody's still caught up in race. And this is again why you have to ask white people, "What do you want?" Because what black people want to do is live in the country that they didn't ask to be in. They want to live and be a part of a country they didn't ask to be in. And they want to help build a country that they are forced to stay in um, because this is our home, this is our country. We consider ourselves American citizens. We want to be a part of America, but the only person keeping black people from being a part of America are white supremacists who are still caught up in an archaic way of thinking because if you look at the whole social construct of white supremacy, it's an obsolete concept. It's an obsolete construct that is choking the life out of America. The whole idea of white men being supreme and gods over black men is an old, outdated concept that is not helping us in the 21st century. In the 21st century world, that doesn't work. And, yeah, racism is choking the life out of America and it's keeping it from being less competitive. And unless white people start to figuring out what they want, their country is going to turn into a third world country. Because you can't keep holding black people back and not hold yourself back. And I'm saying it in every aspect of American life. You're holding yourself, you're, by your trying to choke back the black man, you're holding yourself back. And you're, you, and you're not keeping letting, allowing the country to go forward. And that's what's happening right now. And that's why I have to ask the question, what do you want? What do you want? Because if you were to ask, answer that, because you can't say you hate niggers, and then everywhere you go, every time that black person moves away, or that walks away, there you are, right there. You can't say you um don't want Negroes, niggers at your job, and then when he tries to start a business, there you are, trying to prevent him from competing. You can't say you hate niggers, and then when they're trying to do something, when black people are trying to do something for self, here you are right there, and trying to shame them for, for doing yourself. You can't have black people be dependent on you, and then say that you hate them. Now that, that's, that's, that's illogical, that's insane, and it makes absolutely no sense. The black man didn't ask to be here, but he is here. And if you don't like him doing for himself, what do you want? Do you want him to be dependent on you? Or do you want him to be independent on your terms? Because that's illogical. When you think about that, that phrase I just made, um, being independent on your terms, that's, that's a codependent person. Because that means the person is doing things on their own and you have power over them and that is the definition of codependency and that type of relationship is toxic it is unhealthy and again it's a race to the bottom where everybody is playing the victim and that's what's happening right now and the only way out of a codependent relationship is for people to really do some psychotherapy and really come to terms with it and say look enough is enough I'm walking away from you, and we're going to do our do ours, and you're going to do yours. Um, and, and that all starts with black people asking that one hard question to white people: What do you want from black people? That's all I have to say for this video. If you can answer the question, you can comment, rate, and subscribe.